Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean Autotopia LA. We are here day one of SEMA 2019. Going to show you guys a bunch of the builds that we've been following throughout the year, plus just a ton of other stuff that I can't wait to see as you get a sense just looking around. This is non-stop action. So hold on, because here we go, man. One of my favorite things was my timing of walking in Tuesday morning. I was able to catch the unveiling of Chip Foose's E-Type Jaguar, which was great. But more important to me was I got to catch the unveiling of my friends Jim and Mike, the Ring Brothers, and their wonderful 69 Camaro. For any of you guys that haven't seen this car yet, this is an all carbon fiber body, 100% carbon, widened four inches at the rear, two inches at the front. They've extended the wheelbase on this, an extraordinary interior. Then they had a killer 69 Mustang there that they also won the Ford Design Award with. And it's just another typical Ring Brothers, extraordinary build. I loved this car. So then, shortly after the Ring Brothers, was over to the Keystone booth for the unveiling of my friend Chris's car, Devious Mustang. For any of you guys that have been following the channel for a while, Chris owns Vicious Mustang, which is obviously a much more radical, track-prepped car, where Devious was specifically built to have a really kick-ass street car, and that it is. And then you walk from there, and it's just car after car after car. Everything from JDMs, wide body JDMs, old ones, new ones, Supras, lots of Supras. You walk down here and oh, it's a Supra. And over here, it's a Supra. Look, there's a Supra right next to the Supra over by the other Supra. And then you go over and there's more Supras on your way to checking out other cars that aren't Supras. And yet there's another Supra. And really, the joking aside, there were some really creative, very cool ones. It makes sense, right? That this is an aftermarket event. That's what SEMA is about, is the aftermarket community. And so Supras were definitely represented heavily there. And what I love about SEMA so much is that no matter what your flavor of car is, you will see it walking down below the Ford booth, seeing my friend Steve Strope and his wonderful Challenger that he did for Charles Schwab for the PGA event. This car was given to the winner already last year at the event, and it was Steve had it on display for all of us to enjoy. And it's just a beautiful, very simple car. Wonderful though, I love this build. And a few of my personal favorites that I just feel like pointing out because we followed him along the way, besides following Devious Mustang, was my friend Jesus at Lopez Customs. This is his first client build. It's called Grim 7.0, the 69 Camaro. And there was a lot of 69 Camaros there to compete with, a lot of them. And I think his car showed extremely well. He did win a couple of awards, best on a Roadster Shop chassis, best interior. And it is just a phenomenal car. For any of you that have followed the channel, we've been following this build progress for the last six or eight months now. We did a video recently showing the full car and it was wonderful to get to see my friend Jesus really do well at SEMA and show well. Another car that we showed a lot of over the recent months is our friend TJ and his Baja 911, which was out in the Toyo Tread Pass, which you could have spent the entire day in the Toyo Tread Pass and just been stoked to see what was going on there. But TJ's car for me is one of the show-stopping cars. Obviously other people thought that because this car made the top 12 best from Battle of the Builders. He didn't win it, which we were all kind of pulling for him but it was really cool to see him make the top 12 with this wonderful build that he did. This Baja 911 is so cool. And along with that car in the Toyo Tread Pass was another top 12 Battle of the Builders finisher. It actually won best in its class. And it's parked right next to another one that's the same car. A 
550 Spider for all you Porsche lovers like me. And don't worry, these aren't real 550 Spiders. They didn't demo perfectly good, highly collectible cars. They're both fiberglass cars, both extraordinary. But the one that really caught my attention as much as the Nardo gray with the blue interior was a beautiful car, was the center seat 550 Spider. Stunning car, and yes, we will be shooting this one. One of my favorite cars at the show was this 1969 Mustang. For all you Ford guys, you're about to freak out. This does have an LS motor in it. Ooh, ooh. But it's such a killer build, and I love that it wasn't this, that this guy is not a custom car builder. This was his first car build. He's a software designer. Just a stunning car, full purpose built to go pound on it. And that's just a small segment of the show. As you walk around, you see everything you could possibly see from Euro cars, radical wide body BMWs. You got Porsches, you had the Tim from BBI Autosport out there with his Pikes Peak hill climbing car, which won best in class at Pikes Peak this year. You had Mercedes, Ferrari, Lamborghini, you name it, man. As far as Euro cars go, it was all there, like it is every year. And then in the JDM realm, I gotta say, man, there was a couple of really killer older ones that we caught. My friends from Speedcore were out there in full force with carbon demons, multiple carbon demons. They also, in the Magnaflow booth, their all-wheel drive, wide-body, modern Dodge Charger out there. And this car, I can't remember exactly what it's making right now. I talked to Dave from Speedcore, and they're about to bump it up to somewhere around 1,600 horsepower, because they want to go for a world's record, along with their Dodge Demon that holds a world record. Trucks, did I mention trucks yet? You got low trucks, wide trucks, old ones, new ones. Again, for the enthusiast, this is complete overload because everywhere you go, there's something to see. We had a great time with our friends from SeaTech Chargers, our Swedish buddies, and they, they brought together some pretty cool stuff in their booth to attract attention. They had the Ford Escort from Fast and Furious 6 that Paul Walker drove. My friends from Chrome Cars brought that car out. Ed China was there from Wheeler Dealers and his driving couch actually does drive. He drove it from Los Angeles to Las Vegas because that's what Ed does. And Ed was there hanging out, signing autographs all week long. Cody Walker was hanging out for a bit with us over at the SeaTech booth. We had Frederick Osbo, the world renowned drift driver. A car that I had the pleasure of storing here at the shop and it's back here now at my shop, post SEMA, is a beautiful 1970 Dodge Challenger built by Rides by Cam from Australia. This is an extraordinary car and yet another one that I promise you we will be doing some shooting on this car after SEMA. One that I was looking forward to seeing is, again, any of you that have been following the channel, you've probably heard me mention a couple times how much I'm in love with the new Corvette C8, which was definitely on display at the Chevy booth, but the badass was there is the C8R. You see this car just instantly, you want to go for a drive. I mean, it's SEMA. We even had a friggin' marching band. <laughs> Did I mention girls yet? There was a lot of girls. There's always girls. I mean, and they're not there hanging out, walking around for the most part. They're there as models. You know, and muscle cars are probably, I still think, the dominant force at SEMA. Just an incredible showing as there is every year of muscle cars from some of the most fantastic builders around the world. There's a young fabricator we shot recently with his crazy wide body, Mustang that's a 67 mixed with a 99 Mustang. He brought out a bonkers gremlin and I was joking with him and I told him without question it's the only gremlin that I've ever seen that I would ever consider driving because I think that's one of the most heinous cars ever produced and his version looks like a blast. He's a cool kid and I think he's a young gun to watch. Our friend Tony who brought you guys corrupt Mustang last year brought out his build for this year, which was a 64 
split window Corvette. I know, there wasn't a split window Corvette in 1964, which is cool that rather than demoing a perfectly good 63 collectible, he chose to do it with a 64, and it was just a beautiful car. And then, you know, I gotta top it off. My favorite way, by far, I've never ended SEMA this way. But something I had the pleasure of doing was Paul and I riding on the couch. That's right, the driving couch with the one, the only, Ed China. And before we could even make it out to Ignited, we had to actually get out of the convention center. Ed thought it would be a nice opportunity since he didn't really get time to walk around. It was during breakdown and teardown and cars rolling out, we went rolling through SEMA on the couch. We ran into friends, we saw great cars, uh, people ran up and took pictures with Ed, and then ultimately, we did make our way outside and got to ride behind a couple of lowriders through SEMA, ignited. The crowd went nuts. I mean, it's fun to watch how many people just love Ed China, and understandably so, besides what he did on the TV show. He's really just a cool guy that's nonstop sense of humor. Just a killer way to end it was rolling through SEMA Ignited with Ed China on the driving couch. All right, you guys, we have officially made it back from SEMA. What an extraordinary week seeing friends, and colleagues and clients and cars, amazing cars. I love watching all the builders from around the world bringing what they got. Just a killer week, man. I don't know what else to say. I'm completely fried right now from a week in Vegas at SEMA. So that's it for today's episode. I hope you guys enjoyed our version of SEMA. As always, I say thanks for hanging and watching and supporting what we do. I truly do appreciate it, you guys. And I will see you in the next episode. All right, man, later.